Venus of Willendorf. Fake Venus of Willendorf. I brought the fake one along because I'm not allowed to touch the real one. She's too precious and old. But I wanted to show you just how snugly she fits in the hand, how rubbable and touchable she is. And that surely is what she was made for, to be handled. This is the first undisputed masterpiece of world sculpture. She was made about 25,000 years ago, and they found her in 1908 near the village of Willendorf in Austria, and quickly started calling her the Venus of Willendorf, a cuddly beauty from the dawn of prehistory. As you can see, she's got no feet. That's not because they've been lost, but because she's never had any. She's never been able to stand up. So she must have been made to be carried around. That's why she's so tiny and transportable. She's a lucky charm or talisman, something you took with you to help you get something important. What could she be helping with? Oh, come on, it's obvious. The huge breasts, the big stomach, that sweet and puffy little cleft between her legs. It all speaks unmistakably of motherhood. This is some sort of fertility figure, something you carried around with you when you needed help from beyond to get babies. There are people, though, who say she's not actually pregnant, just very fat. And that our primitive ancestors were, for kinky ancient reasons, celebrating fatness. But fatness and fertility were interchangeable in the early human worldview. And in some societies, they still are. There are tribes of Tuaregs in sub-Saharan Africa who force-feed young girls goat's milk to make them fat and fertile. And research done on various tribes in various places suggests a continuing preference for the larger woman, for big bottoms and motherly thighs. I asked a scientist I know why that might be and he gave me the obvious answer. Oestrogen, the female sex hormone. It stimulates fat deposits on the buttocks, the breasts, the thighs, and without it, you can't get babies. So lingering within us somewhere, on a much deeper level than the current taste for starved and bony size zero girls, is a dim awareness that the plump, oestrogen-filled, bigger woman gives us an extra shot at fertility, better hope for the future. And believe me, the early history of sculpture is packed with proof of this instinctive human fondness for the fuller figure. Thank you.